Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei, Minasan, Ohayo Gozaimasu, and welcome back to another Friday video. And today we're focusing on rehousing these little guys. The species is the Neoholothella Insei. And at last, it is time to rehouse these. And for those who are new, or for those who have missed out, I have recorded the reading, the exact opening, and now the separation of the species. I'll leave a card in the top right, so go check it out if you haven't seen those already. But anyhow though, let us get straight into it. The Neoholotheli Insei, also known as the Trinidad Dwarf Tarantula. This is a relatively small species, only getting around 2 to 3 inches in leg span as adults. The best part about this is that they don't take up much space in terms of their enclosure size, and they have amazing webbing tendencies. So if you want to get a tarantula that stays relatively small and doesn't get too big, and webs a lot, and is a great eater, then this is the species to go to. And for me personally, I think this is an amazing beginner tarantula, especially since it's fairly common and is readily available because people are producing this species very often and very frequently. So you can buy a sling for around $10. It's really cheap, like I think it's worth the money. So for the average tarantula hobbyist here in the United States, it's a relatively affordable and relatively common tarantula. But for us tarantula breeders, some of them don't really want to breed the species because it's not profitable. So what they do is they typically just buy through wholesale from another breeder who has produced them. Because even through wholesale, it's relatively cheap to buy them. So uh, people pretty much buy them all around, from the common hobbyists to the great breeders. For me personally, you can pretty much tell by just watching this video that I prefer just breeding them myself. Because it's pretty much a low effort tarantula project because the females don't take up too much space, the conditioning after pairing is not too difficult, and overall everything around the species is relatively easy. I don't, <laughs> I really don't see anything hard. Uh, maybe the only downside is that sometimes they can be a little bit skittish and fast for a dwarf species, but other than that, everything else is pretty easy going, <laughs> if, I, if I'm being honest. Now jumping back into this video, when it comes to separating the species, it wasn't too difficult for me because their sac numbers wasn't too large. In my experience and from what I've seen, most egg sacs in terms of sac numbers is usually not that big or that high in terms of number count. It's usually around 70 to 50-ish in terms of sac numbers. Sometimes lower, sometimes maybe a little bit more. I have yet to see an egg sac where there's over 100 sac mates for this species. Because this tarantula is a dwarf species, so you're not going to see relatively large tarantula egg sacs. But I am curious though, I would like to see an egg sac of this species where there's over 100 eggs. Or over 100 total numbers in terms of actual babies once they're second instar. Because I think that will be very, very interesting. But for everyone who is wondering about the final counts for this tarantula egg sac here, and all the babies that were separating, let me know down below. How many babies do you think there are? Because I'm going to tell you at the end by the way, so stick around for that. So a lot of you may be wondering how many I'll keep as holdbacks, and the honest answer is that I'm not too sure just yet. As of now, I gotta make sure that these guys are eating and doing well, and then I'll look at my stuff, and then I'll determine how many I'll keep. I may keep all of these because I'm trying to grow out my collection as a tarantula breeder, so that way I can use these offspring as the foundation to building myself up into a tarantula business, because that is one of my future goals, is to start a small tarantula business locally. So if you want to see this journey, then also stick around, and uh, yeah, feel free to tag along because I'm going to show you a bunch of things. Uh, maybe some things that you don't really see on YouTube, who knows. So as of the uploading of this video that you're seeing today, these little guys have been fed already, as I'm doing the commentary of this video. And the good news is that all of them are eating, so that is honestly a good thing. Now these little guys are very small, so for me, I just feed them chopped up mealworms. Yes, I just take some mealworms, some live mealworms that is. I cut them up to pieces, and then I just throw them in and let them scavenge it. And trust me everyone, one small little piece of a cut mealworm is a lot for this dwarf species. Because remember, they're very small. So one small cut piece of mealworm is like a literal Thanksgiving feast for these little guys. It's, <laughs> it's that's the funniest comparison I can use, Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, it's honestly relatively affordable when it comes to feeding these guys as well because they're small and they're great eaters. So it's a relatively very easy species to keep, man. I don't even <laughs> I don't even know what's difficult to be honest. Maybe during rehousing because they're a little bit quick, as stated earlier. But everything around the species is just easy. <laughs> 
But uh, that's the best comparison I can use in terms of feeding these guys. I know, using an American holiday, Thanksgiving and whatnot. I know they have Thanksgiving in Canada too, but uh, that's on another day, right? But anyhow though, back to what I'm saying, all of these little ones are all fed and they're all doing great. So that is honestly the best thing. They're flourishing. They're thriving. So do not worry about these little ones because they're a dwarf species. Just because they're small doesn't mean they're weak. Especially for this species. In my personal opinion, this species eats better than some of the larger species. No offense to those larger guys out there, especially when it comes to tarantulas, but these little tarantulas are not to be underestimated. Now as for me, I've been way too busy honestly to be having a good meal. So I've been trying to keep myself, you know, in shape and everything else. But I have to say, it's been very difficult because I've been doing so much work. Tarantula work when it comes to like feeding these guys, tarantula breeding projects, etc. And also my job and my other part-time jobs that I'm doing on and off online as well. So I've been busy 24-7. Honestly, it's kind of hard to catch a break for me as of now. But don't worry everybody, I'm still hanging on somehow, which is honestly kind of surprising. But let us get back into the tarantula talk. So let us talk about tarantula breeding and some of my projects. I want to state this again, I don't necessarily record every single tarantula breeding project that I do because it takes time to edit videos and honestly it takes a lot of time as well to get good camera angles and good recordings at times because sometimes I sit for hours and nothing happens which takes a lot of time of editing from me honestly so I usually just pick and choose what I think will be interesting or I will record if I have free time and the leisure to do so. The overall message is that I don't necessarily record everything that I do, just the things I find interesting or the things I want to put out for you guys to see. And again everyone, I truly want to thank everybody for the support on this channel as well because my community, you and everyone that is watching are amazing. Everyone says I'm underrated but like I stated, I just make videos because I enjoy it. I'm not the next big YouTuber. I don't necessarily associate myself with YouTuber. I'm just somebody who just likes putting out what they do, I guess. I don't... <laughs> I don't even know how to label myself. You see? <laughs> Isn't that just so interesting? Somebody who puts out quality videos and yet they don't even know exactly if they're a YouTuber or not. But hey, whatever happens, happens. Let's just enjoy this ride and uh, just tag along and let us see what happens to me in the future and let us see if we can actually establish a small tarantula business locally. Alrighty, now on to the final count. So the final count of all of the slings once rehoused was 41. In my XAC video, when I pulled the XAC, I stated that there was around maybe 30 to 50 eggs total and looking at the final count is 41. So I would like to see everyone's guesses down below in the comment section on how many they guessed there were because I would be interested to see myself on everyone's guesses. So some people want me to talk more about myself so that way they can understand me better as a person and honestly I think that is a very valid point. So yeah, here's some things about me. Some other things that I do other than just tarantulas is voice acting. So a lot of you may notice that my voice is very soothing or it's very focused on voice emphasis I guess and that is because of voice acting. I have taken voice acting lessons in the past and they were expensive honestly, to me that is. So if you like this voice, my voice, which is my default voice that you're hearing right now, thank you because uh, it puts a lot of confidence more to my voice acting and it is one of my other side careers that I want to pursue as well besides tarantulas. And I guess that's one thing that you guys can learn about me today for those who are wanting to learn more about me in general and who I am as a person. I'll just say this, on the outside, I might seem like a simple person, but in the inside, I do a lot. <laughs> I do way more than just tarantulas. So I guess I'll wrap it up here for today's video. So as always, the typical like, comment, subscribe, new uploads every single Tuesday and Friday. Follow me on social media, support me on Patreon, and with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.